What's up, guys? And welcome back to the 5050 Ball Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm your host, Justin. And, and Jeremy. You ready, bro, bro? Let's go. Woo! Before we get started with today's show, make sure you go hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Really make sure you smash that subscribe button. Also, turn on post notifications so every time we post, you know. Yeah, ring that bell. Now on to today's show. Let's go, baby! What's up, guys? Welcome back to episode three of the 5050 Ball Podcast. We're your hosts, Justin and Jeremy. Thank you guys so much again for tuning in. These past few episodes have been really fun to make. Uh, we've been having a great time doing them, and we just can't wait to keep putting out more and more content for you guys to watch. Starting off today, we've got a really fun packed show for you guys, and we're going to hop into our first segment with The Wall, baby, The Wall of Legends. Jer, what are we doing this week? Okay, so The Wall of Legends, basically, to put it into a few words, is that we just put some legendary moments, some legendary photos on this wall that Justin and I both have a connection with, and last week we did Colin Kaepernick, two, weeks, or two episodes ago we did Bill Belichick. And now we are going with Cam Newton, and this is him hitting the Superman, I believe, against the Titans when he was on the Panthers. So what I wanted to talk about is, first of all, where do you think Cam Newton will get signed? It's going to be a toss-up. I think a starting quarterback is going to get hurt, and they're going to call for him. Um, I would have liked to see the Chargers or maybe the Jets, I think, yeah. go after him. I, I wanted to see um, Chicago go after him before they w they went and got Nick Foles. Foles. And I, I just think um, I think Cam Newton in a Matt Nagy type of system, I think that would be deadly. Yeah, I like I like a lot of the attributes that Cam Newton brings to the tables. He obviously has his amazing run ability and his big body. He's obviously taken a few hits over the past few years, which has knocked him down quite a bit. But I think his arm talent is actually pretty good. I don't necessarily like his throwing motion, but he, he does have a, a good delivery, and he def definitely worked on it when he has had his surgery, and he's kind of revamped the way he looks at the quarterback position and kind of moves through it. Yeah, he's he's looking like an animal right now. We've seen him working out with Odell Beckham and Todd Gurley. I believe they're down in Atlanta right now. And um, I just think that I I'm curious to see if him or Colin Kaepernick will get signed first. That's definitely an interesting topic to debate. I think uh, I, I like the odds of Kaepernick getting signed first, actually, for right now, because, you know, it's just Kaepernick offers a lot as well as Ken Newton, but I think because of the times right now, like, there's a better shot of Kaepernick getting signed. But what I really like about Ken right now is that he he's hungry. He's he's really working, and he seems, he seems motivated like he was in that 2015 season where they went 15-1, and one, he had 35 passing touchdowns, 10 rushing touchdowns, and that was when, like, the dab was, like, you know, going – worldwide spreading across the nation and cam was everywhere just dabbing on folks you know pissing off teams and he said you know what straight up you don't want me to do it anymore stop me and they they just couldn't be stopped that year until that final game where von miller and the broncos came to town and knocked him off in the super bowl but that season they were having so much fun and they came with so much confidence and that was that was one of the most exciting teams and like fun teams to watch like because they were just having it, it looked like a kid's game yeah yeah i think we both loved that era of carolina panthers football you know they had um, Jonathan Stewart, Stewart, Jonathan Stewart Mike Tolbert, Ted Ginn. On, yeah, on, and then on the outside, they had Kelvin Benjamin and Devin Funches. And then they had Luke Keekley in the middle and Thomas, and Thomas Davis. Davis. And Luke Keekley had like this insane stretch where I think he had like like three straight games with like a pick six. Yeah, their, their front, their whole entire front seven. They, I, I remember like when he was on the field, Greg Hardy was a beast. They had, um, they had a bunch of guys. And one of my favorite sayings was, I feel like if you. If you weren't like, if you weren't with Cam Newton, you kind of hated him. Except for like, I know the fans loved him, but the players, I think they were kind of sick of him dancing all over him because he was so dominant. And I, there's a great quote from Jared Allen, one of my favorite defensive ends of all time. He goes, "This isn't foot footloose. 
he was talking about Cam Newton celebrating in the end zone. But like Cam, like we said, if you don't like it, stop, stop it. it. And a discussion I think that we should have is, do you think there's been a player since Cam Newton who's been as dominant as he's been? Well, I think Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson got to be in that realm. I think they di- they've done it differently, where Patrick Mahomes' arm talent is what made him so exciting. And then obviously he has the ability to create plays with his legs. And then Lamar Jackson was a little bit the reverse, where his legs created a lot of the excitement. And obviously he's a great passer. I mean, he led the league in passing touchdowns in 36, but his legs are what created that exciting factor. Cam Newton had the legs and the arm that year. But his legs, he wasn't trying to shift around people. He was running through people. There was this one play where they were undefeated, and it was for the game against Atlanta, oh, yeah. and they needed a first down, and Cam just ran through an entire team to pick up the first down. They didn't end up winning the game. That was their only loss season where Julio Jones, Moss, is Keekly. But like, that attitude by Cam was just like, if I can't get to where I'm going to go, I'm going to do whatever I need to do. Like I'm going to run through you. Like, and then there was that touchdown against the Cardinals where he didn't have to Superman over – you know, the yeah. defenders, but he decided to jump and obviously he put his body at risk, which was, wasn't the smartest thing, but he was just on such a high that he just felt like he couldn't be stopped. And there was the play against the uh, against Houston where he did a, a, a flip over someone to score a touchdown. Like that was just like, he was like, no matter what, I'm going to get to where I need to go and I'm going to run through you, get by you, I'm going to push you down. Like, and it was just, it was a little bit of like bully ball with him. Yeah. It, if I had to make a comparison from the the NFL to the NBA, I would do Cam Newton to Russell Westbrook because I think just in their prime, it, no one was stopping him. Russell Westbrook was getting triple doubles every night. He he averaged a triple double on the season. Cam Newton was running through defenders. He was he I think he had almost a thousand yards rushing. He was launching the ball downfield, taking shots with Kelvin Benjamin, Greg Olson, you know, and then that run game. It, they're running the triple option. Jay Stu is going yeah, wild that we, year. We both love Jonathan Stewart. That's why that year I was so confused because the year after that, they took Christian McCaffrey and I was like, why do you need him? Jonathan Stewart was like balling out and I also love Christian, so I didn't want the Panthers to get him. But like, it, you know, it turned out that Jonathan Stewart was on his, his back legs. But I mean, that team was this dominant and I, I'm surprised he's, you compared him to Russell Westbrook. I, I would have gone with the bigger guy. I'm thinking like when Cam's going to body you up, I'm thinking Shaq, I'm thinking LeBron, like he's just going to beast you. All right. So that was the Wall of Legends. Let us know who you think should be on next week. And now we're going to move on to the JP Bros Top 10s. Roll it. Welcome back, guys, to the JP Bros Top 10s. So this week, the Madden cover was released. Lamar Jackson, very, very well deserving. He was an absolute beast this year in his MVP campaign. I, I couldn't have think. I couldn't think of anybody else. Yeah, I, was, I don't think it's a surprise at all. Moving forward, we're gonna list our top three candidates for who should be on Madden next year. Who do you think after this season will be on the cover of Madden next year, Jerry? Who is your number three guy my number three guy so right now i'm thinking of a big market you know who's the guy that will get a lo- a ton of love and i think it's ezekiel elliott even though not everyone loves the dallas cowboys you can't deny how big of a market that is i don't think there's been a cowboy who's ever been on madden ezekiel elliott is an amazing player he's been an amazing since he's been in the league and the cowboys look really 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 good this year you know I think with once they get Dak Prescott all locked up, I think they're the team to beat in the NFC East. Yeah, I I think Zeke's a really good choice. Um, I, I just have a hard time. He would have to have a really dominant season. He would have to break the rushing record, I think, if he was going to get put on the cover. And I think it's going to be a little difficult this year, um, just because we're not sure about what's going on with Dak. And I, I just I don't like when teams have like drama that's coming into the season. So it's it's a little. I, I do love Zeke, but I, I just think that. This season for the Cowboys is going to be a growth season where we really figure out if Dak Prescott's their quarterback and we see how that team's going to kind of shake out because there's a lot up in the air right now. It's the first season under Mike McCarthy. So I'm excited. I I could definitely see it. I think Zeke's a good candidate. For my number three candidate, so I went with a defensive player. You know, we don't always see a ton of defensive players on Madden. And I'm just thinking like those lockdown guys, Darrell Revis, Primetime, Sherm, you know, 
I, I think it's time we should see another lockdown corner on there. And I think that Stephon Gilmore is a really good candidate for the next cover. Because if the Patriots, right, if they, let's say, let's say they're good. Let's say they go on and make the playoffs. I'm betting that it's going to be more on the, the fact that their defense is so dominant than their offense. And that would mean because they have a lockdown corner. So why not give it to the defensive player of the year last year and Stephon Gilmore? He was a monster last year. Other than that one game against Devontae Parker, he was shut down all year long. If he can put up another season like that and helps the Patriots make the playoffs without Brady, you know, without Gronk and all these other offensive weapons, that would be something. I think that should garner some attention. Yeah, I I just think the way that Madden likes the Madden likes to put players who are on good teams. I think ex- outside of Joe Thomas being and Peyton Hillis being on the Madden cover with the Browns, they like to get those players on amazing teams. So next, I have um, a little bit of a surprise. I have T.J. Watt from the Steelers because I think Steelers with the Steelers, you have such a a legacy there, and I think they're going to be revamped this year. They have Big Ben, they have James Conner coming into another year, Juju Smith. They drafted a lot of guys, and I just think T.J. Watt, the, his performance last year doesn't get talked about enough because he didn't win the Defensive Player of the Year award. I think he's going to have – my bold prediction for next year is that he has at least 16 sacks. He averages one sack per game, and I think he is going to be a candidate for the Madden cover next season. I like I, I love TJ Watt. He's he's a really phenomenal player, and he would have to surpass JJ in terms because JJ hasn't been on the cover yet. You know, I, I would think that JJ should have been on it by now, but um, I could definitely see it, especially if the Steelers rise back to power. Um, my next one's more of just a, a wishful thinking. It's bold prediction, but we've seen crazier things. I would love to see Quentin Nelson on the cover of Madden. Can you imagine if they put an offensive guard on the cover of Madden? Just just think about it, okay? Phillip Rivers is back in the backfield. The Colts have two very capable capable rushers in Marlon Mack and Jonathan Taylor. Let's say the Colts are the number one rushing team in the in, in the league. Let's say Marlon Mack gets close to rushing for 1,000. Let's say Jonathan Taylor gets close also to rushing for 1,000 yards. You can't put any of them ahead because they're both close enough. You know, you can't separate it. And we just go, hey, you know what? He's making the guard position watchable. Like, it's fun to watch him bully people. And Madden decides, hey, let's 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 get out there for a little bit let's put someone you know that we can all relate to we love the offensive linemen give them a little bit of love because offensive linemen do not get the appreciation that they deserve they only get the hate if they mess up so let's put quentin nelson on there you know just for fun let's just see what see how it goes yeah um i think going back to what i said last time we really got to make sure that who who ends up on the cover of madden is on our very good team and i'm not sure on how good the colts are going to be this year um but what we've seen with the the Madden cover this year with Lamar Jackson is that they have multiple pictures. So it's like they have the cover photo and then multiple like pictures shadowing in the background. And I can only imagine that with Quentin Nelson, like him just like I, probably just towering like, over, just like looking at you mean run, run blocking um, position for the main photo and then cover like just him. I was even thinking like without a helmet on, just like, you know, looking like a bully. And I think that would just be hysterical. That would be really, even if like, you know, like they do like, they do like editions, like, you know, like the old school edition, yeah. the goat edition. What if they just did like, just like guard edition? Yeah. And we've seen it before with when Joe Thomas, who was an offensive tackle, but he was on the cover of Madden, which is ridiculous. But yeah. yeah so uh, I can't, I mean, if there's going to be another offensive lineman, it's got to be big Q right big now, Q. right? Yeah. All right, Jared, who's your number one candidate to be on the cover of Madden next season? So the past two years, we've had Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson, who were both breakout candidates in the NFL, and a young guy, a guy who that kids love. And I think the next one is going to be Kyler Murray, the quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals. And the reason I'm thinking is, you know, you got DeAndre Hopkins, you got a ton of weapons. You know, they got drafted the offensive Josh um, Josh Jones in the third round. I think this team is going to be lethal. They have Kenyon Drake back for another year. We saw the the offensive resurgence when Drake joined the backfield. And I think Kyler's going to be more sophisticated and understand defenses more in his second year. You know, he's playing with Cliff Kingsbury. Cliff Kingsbury has a better understanding of what Kyler Murray can do. And I just, you know, I'm a huge 49er fan, if you couldn't tell. But I, I can see Kyler Murray being insanely good this year. Yeah, I mean, that's a tough division. I mean, but if he, if he goes ahead and knocks off the Seahawks, the Niners, and the Rams... All teams that have been in the playoffs to not even the Super Bowl in recent, you know, years. Yeah. 
that would be a very high accomplishment. The NFC's got some fighters in there, and um, he would be battling with the best in that in that in that West. So yeah, I could definitely see it, especially if he takes the next step, like a lot of quarterbacks are projected to in their second to third year. Yes, and the uh, addition of DeAndre Hopkins is is massive, and they're they're them building protection up front for him also is is going to play a huge part. So that'd be a cool thing to see. I I also went with a young quarterback for my number one candidate. So in the past two seasons, especially for Madden, we saw the quarterback with the big arm. Then we saw the quarterback with the great legs. So let's put them together. And what do you have? Josh Allen. I am very high on Josh Allen this year. I think he has an amazing arm. He obviously has the strength and he can make any throw on the field. He has fantastic legs, better than I thought when we saw him. You know, he he hurtled over like Anthony Barnes or something like that or like in a Vikings game. He's been rushing for like, I think like 10, 10 touchdowns a season almost like he has the ability. I think the, uh, the issue for Josh Allen has been the mental game. I think when he played the Patriots, he would, he would always underperform. And I think playing in his first playoff game, um, I think towards the end, he got a little rattled, but I think now that he's had the experiences, Tom Brady's out of the division. He's had experience in the playoffs. There's no one really, I see in that division that's going to take the top from him. And they, they do have a little bit of a tough schedule that'll kind of like build him up and build that team up. I think he's ready to take, the next step, like I said, the third year and the second year are the years where you see the quarterbacks grow the grow the most. I saw a lot of growth, growth and development in the second year, and now in the third year, it's time for him to take that leap to, you know, MVP type level. And I, I just think I think I, I love Josh Allen. I'm excited to see him. Yeah, I love Josh Allen. And going back to what we were talking about earlier, is we we've seen glimpses of Cam Newton in him. You know, he's a little reckless, but you sometimes you want your quarterback to be reckless. The one thing I would say is. You know, Buffalo's not the biggest market. And even though I love Bills Mafia, they're one of the, my favorite fan bases in the NFL. I, j- I think you got to have a big market to be on the cover of Madden. Well, a big market starts by the team being good. And last year, we saw them take steps to that next level. You know, they, they, they stepped out of the bottom tier of the league and showed themselves as real contenders. There was a stretch where I think, I think they're like 10 games. Josh Allen only had one interception. Yeah. It was wild. Like, it, he, he would start off the year with a lot and then just, like, tapered off. And, and adding Stephon Diggs doesn't hurt, too. Oh, yeah. The addition of Stephon Diggs, a true number one wide receiver, I think that's just going to elevate him. I mean, Josh Allen really hasn't had a number one since he's been in the league, and I can't even think of one he had in college. This might be his first time having a true number one wide receiver, and we love Diggsy. Diggsy is wild. His footwork and his progression is, is like, on another level. Yeah. Stephon Di- I remember with um, Josh Allen back when he was at Wyoming, I wasn't the biggest fan of him. I loved Lamar Jackson, you know, he was my favorite quarterback in that I class. loved Baker. Even even jo- and I love Josh Rosen too. But, Didn't like Josh Rosen. Um with Josh Allen, there was a lot of question marks because he wouldn't make the smartest decisions and he's we've seen him develop in his second year and he's he had has- a lot of growth and glimpses. Like I remember the last game of his rookie season, they were playing the Dolphins and he had three passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns and passed for over uh 230 yards. Um, you can see the development. Like I see when he, when he scrambles, he's not just looking to run now. He's actually looking through his progressions at one, two, three. Okay. Is it time to throw the ball away? Is it time to, de- to get out of bounds? You know, and I, that, that shows improvement and that shows that he has the capabilities to go beyond what he's been doing. Yeah. I think with him and Kyler Murray, both of their potentials are insane. So that was the JP bros top one O's. Let us know who you think had the better list in the comments section. And yeah, now we're going to move on to the coin toss. Let's go, baby. What's up, guys? And welcome back to your favorite segment, the coin toss. The rules are as follows. Both Jeremy and I will bring in a topic and a position on that topic. However, the twist is that we have to flip a coin to decide whether we have to argue for or against that topic. If you land on heads, you will kick off on your position on that topic. If it lands on tails, you will receive and have to defend the opposing topic. Neither Jerry and I know the position or the topic the other person has brought to the table today, and we don't know if we're arguing for or against that topic. Jeremy, let's get it started. What's your first topic of the day? So my first topic of the day is that Keenan Allen and Mike Williams will be the best receiver duo in the NFL next season. Now you will flip a coin to decide whether you get to argue for or against that. So I get to argue for that topic. So we're going to put 30 seconds on the clock. All right, Jerry, you're going in three, two, one. Keenan Allen and Mike Williams will be the best receiver duo in the NFL next season. They have a new quarterback, Justin Herbert, and um, who's a young, uh, highly anticipated player. 
and I think he's way more accurate than Philip Rivers was the, has been the past what three seasons. Mike Williams really broke out last year, and now he's he's gonna have a bigger role this upcoming season. Keenan Allen is the best route runner in the NFL. He has one of the best get offs in the NFL, and I think that teams will be focused on stopping Austin Eckler this season too. All right, that is Jeremy's first argument. Now it's time for my first argument. Three, two, one. I do not think that Keenan Allen and Mike Williams will be the best wide receiver duo this season, mainly because of their rookie quarterback and Tyrod Taylor. I think that Phillip Rivers had a good chemistry with both of them. I'm not super certain on either of their injury ability to stay healthy for the entire season. I also like a lot of other wide receivers duos. I like Tyree Kill and Sammy Watkins or Nicole Harbin. I like Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton. I like Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson. There's a bunch of guys that can come out of nowhere. I like T.Y. Hilton and the new rookie Michael Pittman. There's a lot of other receivers that could take that top spot, and I just don't think that the Chargers are going to take it this year. Now, Jeremy will get another argument for a rebuttal against my first argument. Jer, let's get it going in three, two, one. So we know that the big weakness for the Chiefs is that their cornerbacks. You know, all those games are going to be high scoring. Same with the, against the Broncos, a, a new revamped offense, a new um, revamped offense for the, the Raiders this year. I, I see that the Chargers putting up a ton of points in the passing game, and I think that Justin Herbert will give a flash to the Chargers. And the new uniforms give them all that swagger, and I just see that Keenan Allen and Mike Williams will be completely unstoppable this year. Now it's time for my rebuttal to that argument. Three, two, one. I really think that the lack of chemistry between Justin Herbert and his receivers is going to hurt them. I also think that Hunter Henry is going to have a big year and take away some options. I think that Austin Eckler is going to have a big year receiving. And I just I like where the AFC West is going in terms of competition. The Denver defense is obviously very good. I actually like where the Raiders are going. And I actually do like what the Chiefs are doing. I think that the games are going to be so lopsided in that division that the Chargers are just not going to stand a chance. The receivers aren't going to have the ability to make changes because they're going to be so far behind. All right. Now, Jeremy and I will get a closing statement to seal the deal on our argument, and it's up to you guys to decide who had the better argument. Jer, what is your closing statement? Mike Williams and Keenan Allen will be the best wide receiver duo in the NFL next season. Mike Williams and Keenan Allen will not be the best wide receiver duo in the NFL because of their inconsistent play at quarterback and their injury history. My question for you is, who do you think will be then? There's a lot of there's a lot of contenders. I, I I'm gonna look at maybe somewhere someone coming out of nowhere. I also really like Robert Woods and Cooper Cup out of the Rams. I think they'll have a nice balance back here this year. Yeah, and I just on another topic, I think Mike Will, Mike Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders are also gonna be great. That could also be a really good one. Yeah. So now and what we didn't even mention Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Yeah. All right. Okay, so now it's time for my topic. My topic is that Christian McCaffrey will finish as the number one running back next season. Okay. I do believe this. Now I flip the coin to see whether I get to argue for or against that. Oopsies. Tails. So I now have to argue against that. Jared put 30 seconds on the clock. Okay. In three, two, one. I do love Christian McCaffrey. I think he's an amazing athlete. However, I do not think that he will be the number one running back next year. There's a bunch of up-and-coming running backs that are great. You talk about Derrick Henry, Saquon Barkley, but also, in recent history, a running back has never been able to stay consistently throughout the past five years. Think about, think about the past five years, the top running backs. You think of LaShawn McCoy, Jamal Charles, David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, Todd Gurley even. It's, an, it's, it's really difficult at the running back position to stay healthy and stay consistent in that position, even from just up. five years ago. Okay, so now I have to argue for Christian McCaffrey being the best running back in the NFL. Three, two. So you talk about the running backs in the past five years. Why don't you mention Saquon Barkley, Ezekiel Elliott, and all those guys, Alvin Kamara, who's, even though he did, had a down year, he's going to be... My point. He's going to be a great running back this year, and he was even good last year. But if you look at the new Panthers offense, no one knows what to expect. We look at what Joe Brady did with LSU. We saw what Clyde Edwards-Hilaire can do. You know, Teddy Bridgewater is the perfect quarterback for... Christian McCaffrey because he's so accurate in that short to me medio, uh, middle range. And I just think Chris McCaffrey is going to be unstoppable this year like he was last year. Time for my rebuttal to that. All right. Three, two, one. You talk about all this stuff that's going for Christian McCaffrey, but did you know that Teddy Bridgewater has never thrown more than 14 touchdowns in a season? Even Kyle Allen had 17 last year. 
So I think that the defense are going to stack the box against him and keep it inside. And yes, I think McCaffrey will be able to do a lot, but not as much as everybody else thinks. Then I didn't say he wouldn't be good, just not the number one running back. I think that could go to Saquon Barkley or Ezekiel or, or even Derrick, um, Henry. Derrick Henry or even, even a rookie. I like Jonathan Taylor with the Colts. You know, there's a lot of guys that can come steal that tough spot. Maybe a bounce back here for Done. early. Take your second one. All right, three, two. Christian McCaffrey is, has so many more possibilities under Chris Greer or not Chris, um, under, um, under Joe Brady. So you, you know he's, Joe great Brady, with those, you know Joe Brady. he's great with the angle routes. He's great on, on the flats and the swings. He, he can line up in the slot, can line up outside. Teddy Bridgewater's also never had this opportunity and after his injury. And we saw how good he was with the Saints. And now he has um, the Panthers offense. with, And Chris McCaffrey has more weapons on the outside than he did last year. You think Teddy Bridgewater will never have these weapons? You mean with Stephon Diggs or Michael Thomas or, you know, he didn't even, you know. You, you, so I, that was, first of all, Stephon Diggs, I think his rookie year before he changed teams, and then, or maybe his second year. And then last year, we saw what Teddy Bridgewater did with when he had Adrian, Thomas. You mean when he had Adrian Peterson or Alvin Kamara? I Adrian just, Peterson's not a receiving back. And we, what, are you, what are you talking about? Teddy Bridgewater had one of the best seasons, like, before he got replaced last year. Still didn't have. He, he did won have five games with, the, with one of the best offenses, one of the best complete teams he ever. He went five and oh. All right. oh, okay. All right. Now it's time for one closing statement from Jeremy and I. Jeremy, what's your closing statement? Christian McCaffrey will repeat as the best running back in the NFL next season. Christian McCaffrey will be good, but not the best running back next season. I think that honor is going to go to Saquon Barkley or Ezekiel Elliott or maybe even Derrick Henry or someone unknown. We'll see. Raheem Mostert. All right, guys. This has been the coin toss. Now it's up to you who vote on who won this argument in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time on the coin toss. Let's go, baby. Bye, Please. boom. That was the coin toss, and now we're moving on to our next segment, Hype Me Up. <laughs> hype Me Up is the segment where we literally hype up a player who doesn't get enough recognition, maybe a guy who's a little more under the radar entering his rookie year, maybe he's a young guy in the NFL, or maybe he's even in college. Um, this week's Hype Me Up is on Devin DuVernay, the wide receiver out of UT Austin, now on the Baltimore Ravens. I love Devin DuVernay. He was a later round draft pick, but I think he has the potential to be the number one receiver in Baltimore. I love Hollywood Brown. I like Miles Boykin, and I love um, their tight ends with Mark Andrews and Nick Boyle. But Devin DuVernay, he reminded me a lot of Tyler Lockett. He's he has the best tracking skills in the draft coming out of the draft this year. He's a thicker build. He's insanely fast. He has that body control where he, he can just tap his two feet in. He can drag it. And he, we saw him step up in the big moments. When Texas played against LSU this year, he, he showed out. And, you know, I think he's that guy who can give the Ravens a spark in the passing game. You know, it was supposed to be Hollywood Brown, but I think Hollywood Brown's going to be more of a number one guy. Well, Devin DuVernay, he could be the number one, but I think he could also be the guy who takes the top off the defense. Yeah, last season, um, we saw glimpses from Hollywood where he would step up and kind of be that shoot number one. There was that one catch in the Titans game where he had that one-handed grab, and it was just, you know. he In, in the Rams game, he stepped up. Yeah, so I, I, I like Hollywood. Um, I, I, I'm ex I need to see his progression from year one to year two, but I think Devin DuVernay really does have a great shot to kind of be that reliable target on the outsider, the slot that um, Lamar can rely on because know, we know that he uses Mark Andrews as a safety blanket, and Mark Andrews can also make some good plays. But if Lamar just falls in love with this guy, he has a really good shot to kind of take over the league. Yeah, I think I really love I love Devin Duvernay. I had him as a third round I had a third round grade on him coming out of the draft this year, and I just I can see him being that guy who steps into the Ravens' offense and 
is that guy that no one's talking about him. No one's ex- expecting him. Everyone's planning for Marquise Brown or Mark Andrews or that run game with Mark Ingram and J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards and Lamar Jackson, obviously. But I think he's that guy who can be the consistent touchdown machine for Lamar Jackson. Yeah, the Ravens have an underrated receiving core this year. I mean, the guys are young, obviously. The entire team is young. But I wouldn't be surprised if they stepped up and they were, they started lighting people on fire. I mean, Lamar did it last year. I don't see him stopping. I mean, I, I think they'll do it again this year. Yeah, and I think a big question with Lamar is, can he win the big playoff game? And I saw, I saw earlier this week he talked about that they underestimated the Titans, and I think a lot of teams did. And I think Lamar has that experience. He understands what it takes, and I think he's going to spread that to Devin DuVernay, Marquise Brown, and I really think this Ravens team is going to be a Super Bowl contender. Well, one of the one of the one of the best things about Lamar Jackson was his ability to spread the ball around last year. You know, he didn't obviously he locked into Mark Andrews a lot because that was his safety blanket. But I mean, he had the ability to kind of spread the ball all around the field, let everybody get a piece, and that's what made him so deadly is that you couldn't really take one guy away because they could hit you from multiple multiple angles. You know. And so if Devin DuVernay starts stepping up and making plays and Lamar Jackson starts trusting him and starts going to him more often, you know, oh, they are covering Hollywood. Oh, they're covering Mark Andrews. They're doubling him with a safety. This leaves the top open for Devin, du- Devin DuVernay to make some hay, you know, like kind of like the way that Juju did when Antonio Brown was with the Steelers and Juju was kind of left one-on-one in a lot of situations. You know, teams weren't giving the re- him the respect they deserved. You know, you could really see someone, especially if he overtakes Miles um, Boykin for yeah. that number two role. So... Devin DuVernay, the way he's built, he has an insanely large lower body. And I can see him stepping into the Debo Samuels type role for the Baltimore Ravens. Debo Samuel is my favorite player in the NFL. I think last year I got to hang out with him for a little bit. And I can see Devin DuVernay being that guy who can take reverses, take those little drag routes to the house. He ran track at Texas. He was uh, one of the fastest players in the draft this year. And I can really see him being that that sleeper guy who breaks out out of nowhere, and he deserves to get that hype. Yeah, the Ravens are really good at putting their players in the best position to succeed by using their strengths for them, you know, by utilizing Lamar Jackson's legs. Yeah, Greg Roman's amazing at that. He, he is. I mean, you saw what he did with the Niners. Long He's had a good track record. So I, I like the Ravens. I think that that was a great team for him to go to because there isn't a – I wouldn't say there was a bona fide number one like there is in Atlanta or, you know – Yeah another you know yeah, star strutted team so I, I like this i like this pick and um it wouldn't surprise me if 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 we heard a lot of devin duvernay this year yeah i think devin duvernay is gonna be a star and that was hype me up all right guys it's time for the two minute drill the two minute drill is at the end of the show where jeremy and i throw quick hitting questions at each other and we have to answer them calmly and collectively to be able to score the two minute drill in the nfl is at the end of the game when the team is going down to win the game they need a touchdown to win you need your quarterback to be calm and efficient so you can be able to win the game so jer you're gonna throw some quick hitters at me let's start it off in three two one adam thielen or stefan diggs diggs Best player in the NFL after the catch. Ooh, that's rough. Um, Julio. Most annoying fan base in the NFL. Patriots. Hardest player to tackle in the NFL. Derrick Henry. If you could visit one stadium and watch a game there, which would it be? Ooh, um, it would probably be um Arrowhead. NFL player you'd most want to see play in the NBA. <laughs> Um, oh, that's rough. I would really love to see. Oh, Hurry up. I'd love to see Gronk in the NBA. What player looks like he's having the most fun when he plays? Oh, I mean, that 2015 season was Cam, but I would say, I would say Mahomes. And then last question, rank these three Or Mark players. Ingram, Mark Ingram. Rank these three players, Debo Samuel, A.J. Brown, and D.K. Metcalf. A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, Debo Samuel. All right. Heavy disagree, but okay. Now it's time for me to ask Jeremy my quick hitting questions. Jared, we're going to start it off in three, two, one. What movie would Aaron Rodgers star in? Um, Aaron Rodgers would star in. Uh, come on, come on. Um, I would say Aaron Rodgers oh. would star in um, Captain America. He'd be Captain America. That's a good choice. What food? best describes Dak Prescott 
Um, Dak Prescott is definitely a lot like um, is a lot like cheese. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. <laughs> Who will be the defensive player of the year this year? Um, defense Nick Bosa. Who is the most underrated coach in the league? Most Kyle Shanahan. You think Kyle Shanahan's underrated yep. after just got a six-year deal? All right. What team will go from last place to first in their division? Uh, the Chargers. Will Sam Darnold make the playoffs this year? No, absolutely not. Which NFL athlete have you not met but you want to the most? Uh, Jimmy G. All right. This has been the two-minute drill. Thank you guys so much for watching. We can't tell you enough how much we appreciate everyone that has tuned in so far. We've been having so much fun doing this, and it's really, really awesome that we get to share our opinions and our thoughts with you guys. And we love seeing the feedback from you guys. Check out our, our Instagram at the 5050 Ball. Check out our website at www.the5050ball.com. And make sure, please subscribe to our YouTube channel also at the 5050 Ball. Thank you guys so much. My name is Justin. And I'm Jeremy. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace. boom way to go you did it you made it to the end of the video thank you so much for watching if you like what you saw please like and subscribe and also follow us on all of our social media at the 5050 ball have a great day peace